Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to have you with us this morning. And we are in Colette's backyard. <laughs> and it's always good to spend time with Colette. So uh, this morning as I walk, as I actually came for breakfast, which was so good. Uh, great conversation with Rob and Colette. And, I, and she said, where do you want to meet? this morning and I said outside good morning Louise so glad that you're with us this morning <clears throat> and as I came into the backyard it's winterized already because normally it that's we would be winterized by now I'm planning going paddling it's still time wow yeah it's still time there's it's gonna be nice this afternoon good morning Paul and Sue so glad that you joined us this morning so glad good morning Al <clears throat> calling I'm calling your Sue today good morning Kayla so glad that you have joined us yes and it's not too cool no it's beautiful and we hear the birds yes we do good morning Jill what kind of bird is that chickadee nope I don't know she okay when we when we talk about phoning a friend for a bird <laughs> I Colette's my phone a friend when it comes to birds good morning Sandy and good morning Karen so glad that you have joined us this morning and so <clears throat> this morning we are in we're continuing on with our study in the book of John and no we have not exhausted the book of John by any stretch of the imagination because I find myself going back in some of the previous chapters that we've already done and I was like, oh, that would have been really, really good. So <clears throat> we'll just have to save it for another time. But today we are in John chapter 18. John chapter 18. Good morning, Elizabeth. So glad that you have joined us. And uh, so we are transitioning from uh, Jesus's high priestly prayer in John 17, where he prays for himself and he prays for the disciples and he prays for all the followers. <clears throat> and then it says, when he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. And on the other side, there was an olive grove and he and his disciples went into it. And so this is now the transition into the final hours of, of Jesus's life. And so before we go any further, let's pray. So Lord, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you that this is the day that you have made. And so Father, we ask you to help us to rejoice and be glad in it as we dive into this, uh, your word this morning. Speak to us, Spirit of the living God. Help us to hold on to its truth and walk it out. And we pray this in your name. Amen. And so in that one line, we transition into uh, Jesus' interaction with uh, the Father to Jesus's interaction with people and how he uh, well I'm just gonna say Colette as you read this chapter because this is one of the things that because sometimes um, people might struggle with how do I actually tell people about the Word of God the best thing that you can do is read it and ask the Spirit to say what stands out to me like that is probably the easiest way to say Spirit of God what is it that stands out to me and, and so if I ever ask you to do a Devo, I'll just say, read the passage and what stands out to you because the Spirit will use that and He'll actually use it with you throughout the day, teaching you, right, about the truth in that. So that's what I did with Colette. I'm like, read chapter 18, tell me what stands out to you. So what stands out to you? Um, what stood out to me is that how alone Jesus was okay. as He did it because we know that Peter went <clears throat> in with Him and another disciple that you is probably John. We think it was said. John. Yeah. Um, even though they went in with him, he was so alone and he knew ahead of time what he was walking into, but he yes. still walked into it knowing fully what was going to happen. Yeah. Into the judici judicial system that, that he himself instituted in the very beginning. Which I totally gapped on until Colette said that. And I was like, you're right, like God set up the judicial system way back in Leviticus um, to look after the people. And so here was God himself. Sorry, I, I'm having a moment. I'm like, here we have God himself, who we know in numbers cannot tell a lie. 
stepping into his own, wow, stepping into his own makings and walking it out. So that when God sets up something, he cannot lie against himself, which leads to why he had to sacrifice. Wow, like that was, wow. Because he could have, he could have revolutionized everything and said, you're all, right, corrupt. But he didn't. He stepped into the judicial system and allowed the men of the time to judge him, even though it totally false. He allowed himself to be judged. Yes, that's good. And the whole system was totally corrupted, and he yeah. knew it would be, and he walked in. He walked in thinking about you and me. Yeah. and oh, good. Yeah, thinking about us. Uh, and even though, you know, usually when we read this chapter, we're talking about Peter's denial of him. Yeah. But what I found interesting is in, in the chapter, mm -hmm. it goes, it's like the camera goes from Peter... Uh, denying him mm -hmm. the first time in chapter 16 or chapter 17 then it goes back to Jesus and the high priest yeah verse 19 and then the camera goes back to Peter denying him again back to Jesus verse 25 uh, like exemplifying how alone he was and how much we are as sinful as Peter, we have denied him. Yeah. As sinful as the the whole court system, the the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and yeah. all the the high priest, we are we are the we're them. Yeah, and because and I I underline what's interesting and this is, I and you hear me say this yeah this is why I love Jesus. So I read a passage over and I underlined. As I went through, I underlined verse four, Jesus knowing all that was going to happen to him, mm -hmm. right? Knowing all that, he still stepped into it. And then Jesus said to the high priest, like, I've spoken openly, nothing has been in secret. And, um, and then back in verse uh, 11, he says, shall I not drink the cup the father has given to me? And so as I'm sharing this with uh, Colette, I said, like, that's exactly where she was at too. Like the fact that he knew what his calling was and because he's omnipotent, he's all knowing, he knew what was going to happen. So not only did he know his calling, cause I think a lot of us can know what God's calling us to. Um, and when we start to contemplate the repercussions of that choice, whatever it is, I think sometimes we get caught up in the repercussions. And we're like, I can't go there. I please don't. And we hear this all the time. Don't ask me to be a minister. Don't ask me to be a, a missionary. Don't ask me to say something to that person because of the fear in our own heart that rises up that prevents us from walking into that. And as we talked about uh, during breakfast this morning, when we obey the call of God on our lives, there is always a blessing. There's always a blessing. There's always a blessing because when we walk in obedience, God blesses obedience every time, every time. And, and you might be, well, what does that look like? Does that mean everything's going to get good? No, because we know, <laughs> we know where this is, right? We know that um, Jesus did not get exempted from any of the pain, the loneliness, mm -hmm. the shame, the beatings. Like Jesus was not exempted. He still had to walk through it we still had to walk through it and and yet um and i can never remember i think it's hebrews yet for the joy set before him he endured the cross scorning its shame like because and we often get caught up on this we are not willing to make the sacrifice for the small period of time for the greater good we, we, want, we would prefer, okay, I, I've come to know Christ, and it should all be good. <laughs> but it's like, no, it uh, very much is obedience and, and walking through tough times in order to get to the end point. Um, and when the word says, consider the cost, he considered what we were worth. It was worth the cost. Yeah. 
he considered the cost and the cost was worth it. I just, wow. There's so much in this chapter, this idea of knowing what the call was. And so maybe you don't know what the call is. Well, first of all, if you're a follower of Christ, well, if you're not a follower of Christ, the first call is Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you and he has plans and purposes far beyond what you could ever imagine. And so he calls to you in his love to say, come, follow me. Uh, I wanna be your friend and I died on the cross. We're gonna get that into that in, in next week a little bit for you to fully make you right with me so we can, because sometimes I think people say, oh, I couldn't possibly be a friend of God's because of my own sinfulness. And yet Jesus died on the cross to pay for the price of our sin. So we actually can be friends with God and experience his fullness. So if you're not a follower of Christ, that's the first thing. Believe what Jesus says. Believe what Jesus says about who you are and he wants you to be a part of his life. Second thing, if you are a follower of God, Lord, help me to obey. Help me to obey and trust even when it gets really hard, whether I like it or not. I think sometimes we just want to follow God when we like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so true. And then I want to say, thirdly, when the times get tough, turn to Jesus and just say, would you help me walk this out and trust that you really will be with me. And in the end, you will, and, and Roman said this, he works all things together. Knowing all that was going to happen to him, he still went out. Would you pray for us? God, thank you that you are friend to the friendless and father to the fatherless. Mm -hmm. Thank you that you love us so much that no matter the cost, you gave everything, everything for us. Mm -hmm. Lord, would you watch over us today? And for those who are struggling, God, today, I thank you for the word of encouragement. You are our peace. Mm -hmm. You are our encouragement. You are our Savior. Thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I almost need to get a hold of myself before I... <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm moved by the power of of the fact that God cannot lie against himself. So the word of God is so full of his truth. And so if he said it, if he has set it into motion, he is faithful to carry it out to the point of even in a corrupt world, mm -hmm. he comes underneath its authority because he set it in authority, he set it in place, and yet in the end he redeems it. All right, our dear friends, thank you for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me. Time well spent. Time with Christian brothers and sisters is always time well spent when the spirit of the Lord is there. All right, <clears throat> so that's it. That's all. Remember to like, share, go outside today, soak in that vitamin D, and go help your community experience the truth of who Jesus is. That's it. Bye.